Hey guys, I'm Kurigo and this is Wasteland 2. Welcome, welcome, welcome. By the way, what's up with all the blood there, huh, Topakan? Let's check that out rather rapidly. Uh, Topakan, oh, you're back. Uh, I'd uh, really appreciate it if you could go tell Kikabaf about me. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, that's no problem there, though. But uh, the problem is, I, you know, like all the blood there. I'm a little bit worried about the big boy, right, you know. But let's see what we have over here. Inside the door is full of red and pigeon bones. Yep, we had that one. Okay, we got Billy Bob over here, Nancy, Little Joe, and James. Captain Night Joe would be funny to have, uh, you know, someone named over there. Uh, sorry, Rangers, we ain't got no X3 for company. If you had been invited, I understand. Billy said, for who we are about to receive, Lord, we thank you. Amen. Soil and green is people, savory, delicious people. What the? James? There's something wrong with you, big boy, huh? Seems like you're eating broccoli or something. Little Joe said, I don't want soy land. I want pancakes. Yeah, nobody wants soy, boys. Don't you worry about it, big boy. Uh, no, 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 no. We're not doing anything there. All right, let's go outside. Now, let's see, though. We got some people over here, of course, here and there. We got someone over here to the right, too. The gingham curtains in these windows and the potted plants around from steps give this car a homely feeling. Uh, let's enter this place first. Oh, this is bad. A library which is filled with random books collected by locals. Who knows, you might find something useful here. Libraries are very useful, like always, right? You know, in games like this. Deja vu? K.O. Faster? Free? For yours? Hmm, library visitors, you'll read a few of the names. Interesting. Very important, right? Oh, your list of library debtors aligned. <laughs> I kept your attention. Um, let's say free experiment. McGregor, the Brothers of Steel. Ah, that's very nice, though. See, this is what I love about Wasteland and Fallout. Right now, they were still together, right, you know? And after Wasteland 2, they did split up. So, we have many memories and um, Easter eggs about other games, right? You know, for Fallout 1 and 2 to this, and, uh, you know, vice versa, like Brothers of Steel. The, um, Gone with the blast, blast Wave. Mm, Gone with the Wind, it's uh, a book. Igor, the Heavens 100. Waylord, the Hermit and his Serenity. Angela Death is no longer affected with Mangold's uh, Metatarsals. Alright, very cool. Looks like the librarian was the victim of an impromptu necro... What? Nephrectomy? Oh boy. The parts on his shirt, says Yegor. Hmm. Better look around a little bit, right? Who knows what else we might find. You skim the bookshelf looking for anything interesting. One catches your eye. Soldovotsky BB's The Tale of Crazy Engineer Peggy. What do we have here, though? You skim the bookshelf. Um, one interesting in your eye. Blah, blah, blah. Zenya Apripov. The Real Life for Dummies or How I Learned to Stop Being Scared to Alienate the Computer. Alright, another book, one catches the eye, Puffles, Hobbots, The Life of a Fool. Some good literature. Uh, Anton Zero, The Old Swings and Naked Moose. Okay. And over here, the Hamster 220, Fighting the Machine. Alright, never heard of that one though. Opa, let's go right in here. Who might this person be, I wonder, huh? That one is kind of there too. But let's go in here. The homely one, right? You know, we want to speak to their leader. Ah, Elder Samuel Cole said, The range just saved Ralphie from drowning. Yes, we did. Ralphie and Libby. Oh, Rangers. I heard what you did for my Ralphie. Thank you. You look so much... Like a friend I have, but a more mature version of her. I would give you gold if I had it, but all I have is this old apple. Well, I could give you my boy. Uh... 
The way how you say that though is very, very wrong, by the way. Uh, glad we could help, ma'am. We'll just hope Rolf is okay. He's my dear, sweet baby. But he sure eats a lot. Ah, one of these ways, huh? To get rid of a big mouth. For feeding us, insulting. And just send him to the military, a cloister, or any place like that, huh? No, he's my dear sweet boy. Yes, you... You want to give us your son? I know it sounds heartless, Rangers, but I can't feed him in this godforsaken place. With the train not running, nobody around here is making a living. Taking Ralphie would be a kindness to me and him. And he's awfully handy with a slingshot. He could help you. What do you say? Will you take my Ralphie and make a ranger out of him? Mom, the rangers won't take someone like me. Quite embarrassing me. Oh, quite embarrassing me. Well, we'll take him. Oh, thank you, rangers. You've saved both of us. He's young. He's curious, right? You know, he's playful. Playful is so important, though, right? You know, if you want to learn stuff. Now come along, Ralphie. These nice rangers are your new parents. You have to go with them now. And you have to start killing people and mutants. What? Really? Oh, right. I always wanted to be a ranger. Now I can make enough money to go live someplace else with Jess. Oops. <laughs> he feels great. This place is nice and all, but I'd rather be out having adventures with you. Really now, big boy, huh? Well, let's see. <laughs> he only has one painkiller. Uh, 18. American. Religion none. Smokes none. Kills. Oh, are the other ones smokers though, huh? Them is done on radiation resistance, water... Hmm, skill points per level, biography. Rofi is a cheerful, curious young man from the impoverished family. Despite growing up in the middle of a blood feud uh, that was uh, that has killed family and friends, and despite never knowing his father, who ran away before he was born, Rofi always seems to see the bright side of things. And that's what we need in the ranges, damn it. Positive and then optimism, right? You know, critical chance 15, 11, a combat initiative. Uh, evasion and combat speed not bad coordination oh he's a lucky boy isn't he strength four that's good two intelligence charisma now what do we have here toaster repair oh damn it man oh animal whisperer that's cool uh, i think we are going to give him oh my god we wasted so many points you know so many points because look at that toaster repair four right Ah, that's bad. Yeah, I saw that focus Corrigo on leadership and uh, conversations, and that's what is what is going to happen from now on. By the way, because such repair will be uh, Ralphie over here. Saves Corrigo, you know, for spreading too too thin and too thick. Perks, junk diver. Your dumpster diving hasn't helped you make any new friends. But who needs friends with all this stuff you have found? Upon fighting a junk item, 50% chance of fighting another junk item. Requires two toes to repair. Cyber Scrounger gains energy cells. Yeah, that one C has. He has the ghost one too. No longer triggers ambush. is very beautiful. Well, that's cool though. Let's talk to the big boy over here before we level up. The, ra uh, la la la. the rangers are heroes and I'm gonna make sure everybody hears about it. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Ralphie, pack your gear. He needs a gun, though. I, <laughs> I should really check if we have something for him. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We could give him the shotgun for now. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. It's because he's the shotgunner, huh? He's the proud owner of that thing. Nobody has anything, huh? Yeah. Oh, that's nasty. Well, big boy. Gotta live with it, I suppose. Oh, what are we talking? Heard you save Parker Boy. Well, Rose says I'll keep that. Yes, you do. <laughs> Chopper 1 to base. Got Atchison sneaking along the western perimeter. Looks like they're up to no good. 10-4, Chopper 1. Hang back till I get you some reinforcements. Where exactly are you at? Negative, Topeka base, disregard, disregard. It was a couple of coyotes. False alarm. Uh, okay, Chopper One. And, uh, lay off those squeezins for a while, all right? No, don't. Oh, yes, absolutely do that. But you always have to call in strange movement, right? Always, because, hey, 
You know, if it is what he said he is, though, and he doesn't report in, it could be too late. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, damn, girl, damn. Her hair like that. She looks like uh, one of the predators, right, from the Alien vs. Predator uh, movie. Trevorous, I can smell the loneliness of the empty ways upon you. I have seen you coming, and now I know why you are here. I did not, however, see that there would be so many of you. Will you take me in turn or reverse me all at once? Oh, my lord. I know you boys want this, right? You know, so let's do it. Uh, Fredericks of Hollywood catalog lies on a bedside table. Woman in strange and revealing clothes pose on the cover. They all have enormous hairstyles. Yep, must be the 70s, right? You know, 60s, 70s. And it got a little bit smaller in the 80s. Now, let's talk to her. I mean, if she can take all at once. Okay, there are three women here, though. So, four. What? Wait a minute. Uh, how many women are here, actually? Four women? Wow. Yeah. You know, it's still a bursty crowd, man. A pillowed, voluptuous woman dressed in the tattered remnants of. I'm, I'm quite embarrassed, by the way. Uh, several sets of lingerie. She looks at you with heavy painted eyes. Several sets of lingerie? That's disgusting. Just wear one set, right? It's better. Alright. I'm yours for only 15 scrap. Do you have a deal? Yes. Prepare your bodies. The music man. Oh my. Hopefully we don't get the disease, right? You know? Well, it seems like nobody got a disease here, so that's kind of weird because normally you do get diseases, right? By the way, I, I, I know that we can get a disease from her, right? But let's send this big boy in, you know, he's part of the Rangers right now. Well, he's a recruit, so let's send him towards Manor. I'm yours for only 15 scrap, yes? Did you get the disease, big boy? Yeah, yeah, they were <laughs> the drippy dragon. His first time, and he gets the drippy dragon, man. That's kind of funny. He's, he's a, a dripper. Uh, the sad dragon weeps and <laughs> burns like fire. <laughs> you can be removed if the appropriate item or real doctor. All right, let's save the game. Never happened, right? Wanted to show it to you guys. Man, the drippy dragon burns like hell and it weeps. All right, now let's see right there. Let's do some same sphinx over here. All right, let's go. We don't want to give the wrong impression to the neighborhood, right? You know, man, the drippy dragon. Man, the humor is great in the game, right? <laughs> Wish we could get the train running again. Yeah, me too, big boy. It seems like we are leaving town over here. Yes, we are. So let's stay here for now. It looks a little bit more green over here, right? You know, than in uh, Wasteland 1 at the real road of the, the real nomads. Anything over here? Nine! Let's move on. German is actually a very soft language, right? You know, it's just par uh, parody. It's non-stop. Uh, on TV, especially Hollywood and stuff. It was once known as the language of poetry. If you ask me, the real thieves and junkies are a big threat than the Artitans. Yeah, probably. You know, that's why you get all the, the Disney uh, uh, fairy tales. Would get together and get this thing running again. Oh, yeah. But yeah, you know, like... Uh, Nothing would help Arizona more than better trade. Probably. Very cool logo. But yeah, you know, the uh, Disney fairy tales and everything come actually from uh, the German countries, you know. An irascible old fellow with an engineer's cap over his blades and a rusty whistle hanging from a circlet of wolf fangs he wears around his neck. Come to see what real men do for a living or are you still pretending you can help us solve all our problems? Better watch your mouth, though, huh? What kind of help do you need? 
Well, forget... By the way, never burn bridges like this guy does from the get-go. Well, forget peace, that won't happen. And Master Kakaba says we shouldn't ask for help in taking care of our internal affairs. But you could chase off those real thieves or convince the Achitons to give back that break shoe. You'd really start changing my mind about ranges. Well, we take this man in high regard, so of course we want that. How important is the break shoe? Without the break shoe, there will be no stopping her. And we have wrecked one train already. I'm not losing another. No matter what those sore losers Achitons want. You had a train wreck? The Achitons smashed up the railway out of town. A derailed engine number 9. They say her brakes failed on the curve, but that's a dirty lie. I maintained those brakes myself. Well, some tough luck though, right, with his engineering skills. Who are the real thieves? Those thieving fucks are getting in the way of our fight with the Achitons. They gotta hide out just beyond our gates, and every time we go to get a little payback on the Achitons, the damn real thief jump or shit. Any, uh, any, what's annoying is what it is. If the Rangers was to take care of them, it will make uh, this whole feud so much easier. Yeah, and in the meanwhile, you know, I'm like, hmm, trying to figure out what's going on with the real chief, uh, thieves. Because what if they are part of the Achitons, right? You know? And that's why sometimes I read a little bit weird because I'm thinking things in the background, you know? Who is Kakaba? Um, that's Master Kakaba to you. The leader of our tribe. You'll find him in the town hall, but don't waste his time if you have nothing to offer. He doesn't suffer fools lightly. Wow, he's calling us fools here, huh? What do you mean, pretending? A lot of rangers have come here, a lot of rangers have stayed. They could get the Topicans and those assholes Edgitons to kiss and make up. A lot of rangers failed. So you're on the Topica side. Yes, sir! Uh, the Topicans have always ruled the rails. No matter what those lying Edgitons might tell you. Why would John Henry have given us the Golden Spike? If it wasn't our destiny to lead. An American uh, folk hero, I believe, right? You know? Um, he was a freed man, I believe, right? You know, I'm not sure. Uh, tell us about the Golden Spike. That's a crown and scepter rolled into one, or proof of our right to rule. John Henry himself gave us that spike. Kekaba keeps it locked up in the meeting hall. You should have a look. Who is John Henry? The god of the railway man. I sing his song every time I start the old 97 engine. Who is old 97? That's my baby, this train right here. I love her more than people. Tell me about the train. This is uh, this here train was the fastest engine on the Santa Fe line. Till that damn Achiton stole her brake shoe. Now she don't go uh, nowhere. And we're going to bro we are going broke because of it. What's the train got to do with you going broke? Let's play dumb him. Who got pe uh, we've got people all over the ways who wanna pay us some uh well, pay us to move their freight. But we ain't been paid in years, cause the train won't go. Damn it, Achitons. And what do you do? I'm the engineer of the train. I keep her running and I keep her moving. That's the kind of work real men do. You keep the train moving too. If the train is fixed and ready, then I'm the one who drives her. I take her out on the rails and visit all our stations. Of course, the Achitons are making that difficult too. Difficult how, you say? Well, used to be Edgitons took care of the, uh, of the rails like we took care of the trains. But then they got up. Uh, uppity and started sabotaging the lines instead of fixing them now even if i get that break shoe old 97 needs there won't be many places for her to go we either gotta beat those adjutants until they start working again or start repairing the rear cells and i don't fancy that that ain't work for topicons a little cough there but Interesting dynamic, huh? One fixes the rails and one rides the rails, huh? And how do you keep her running? Well, now when the train needs water or oil or fuel, I feed her. 
when she breaks down i fix her at the least i, I do most of the time but now that those bastard attitudes have stolen her breaks you all i can do is sit here and polish her breasts now tell me about the attitudes we have been feuding with those good for nothing for long for as long as i can remember first he wrecked one of her trains and now that psycho casey james has gone and stole the brake shoes from the other one not to mention blowing us all up every chance he gets their camp is in the desert out beyond the real thieves head out if you feel like changing that stay a situation well cassidy james who's casey james uh, the mighty Casey is the leader of the Edgertons, used to be their foreman, laying the rails, keeping him safe. Now all he does is destroy things. A goddamn terrorist is what he is, kick about all the string him up with all the other Edgertons we have caught. So they have been hanging them all, huh? I sense that they are kinda innocent though. String him up? You haven't seen all our trophies hanging from the gate? I have. Every time one of the adjutants blows something up, we catch one and lynch him. The uh, teach those ditch diggers a goddamn lesson. Ah, adios, guess I'll be back polishing the odds. Okay. You could be more helpful for your clan, by the way, for your tribe, than just polishing and polishing and polishing. But... Um... John Henry said to his captain... Man ain't nothing but a man. And before I let that steel drill beat me down, I'll die with the hammer in my hand, Lord, Lord. Oh. I'll die with the hammer in my hand. John Henry was a driver on the mountain, and his head was a flash in the fire. And the laugh was I heard that poor boy say, Give me cool drink of water for I die, Lord, Lord. Give me cool drink. Drink of water before I die. Absolutely not my style of music though, but here you go boys. That's John Henry's song apparently. But yeah, I I, I have a feeling like they are innocent though. Oh, the meeting hall is a massive Chambers, big keep an eye on the golden spike. Don't let anyone near it. Okay. The meeting hall is a massive big enough to all uh to hold several train engines. Made of concrete and supported by a metal skeleton. It smells of smoke and sweat and the wind beats against the walls, causing the metal to creak quietly as dust and sunlight pour in through the tiny cracks. And holes in the roof there are an unusual number of one armed men here. Kekaba said chopper keep the Okay, well we did uh, hear that. Ah, Rangers, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too, big boy. Gee, huh? I usually only get to go in here on important occasions. Well, this is actually important while I'm banging my microphone here, trying to blow my mo nose in a second. A faintly eyed older man in a Native American war bonnet and fringing jacket. The left sleeve of the jacket is empty and pinned up. The lack of a left arm has not diminished his presence, however. Indeed, it seems to have given him an extra helping of gravitas, which he uh, wasn't uh, exactly lacking to begin with. Welcome. My people have told me how you saved the Parker boy from drowning. It is an honor to speak to such brave heroes. How can I help you? What do you think of Ralphie? I normally don't approve of Topekans traveling with outsiders, but in this case, there is no loss to the tribe. What? No loss to the tribe? Thank you, Master Kekaba. We're here to help. Help with what? If you wish to help us with outside threats, then you are welcome. But we can handle our internal conflicts on our own, thank you. Stay out of it. Can you at least tell us your side of the story? I am very tired of telling it, but if I must, once the Atchisons and the Topekans worked together in harmony, but then Casey James became angry with us because he believed the Golden Spike was Atchison property and that we'd stolen it from them and grown wealthy because of it. He told his people to sabotage the rails, causing our first train to wreck. We have been at war ever since. Hmm, very interesting. Uh, tell us more about the war. Once we worked hand in hand with the Atchisons. We tended the trains, 
they tended the rails. It grieves me that we fight, and we have tried to make peace since then, but they continue their aggressions, stealing essential parts, planting bombs, and so the feud continues. Yeah. Well, um, I don't think these guys are necessarily innocent either, right? You know, we have to learn more about it. But remember, why will the other ones do it? We have to find that answer, right? You know, to that question. Uh, would you allow the Rangers to negotiate a peace? I told you before, our private affairs are not your concern. Besides, I doubt it's possible. Do the adjutants still tend uh, the rails? They do not. Another reason I still try to make peace with them. We haven't the skill to fix the rails, and it will take time to learn. We keep hoping the Atchisons will stop their atrocities and return to the bargaining table so that we can work together again. But it doesn't seem to matter how many of them I hang. They still won't see sense. Mm. And are you sure the Atchisons caused the train to wreck? Of course I am. I was driving that train personally. And it was not I who wrecked it. And the Atchisons didn't stop there. Now they've stolen essential parts from our second train. And we can no longer travel or trade. They have stolen our livelihood. Mm, this is some very interesting piece of information. What if he did wreck the train, right? And because he's the chieftain of this uh, tribe, you know, it will bring big shame and dishonor right because they are worshipping john henry and that means that this tribe is not worthy of the golden spike because their chieftain did cause such horrible destruction to one of their holy objects right you know so yeah no wonder he's blaming the adjutants then if that is the true case until the break shoe is returned we are at war and would you like us to get the break shoe back no we will get it back on our own. We do not require outside assistance. If he's really serious, right, you know, every help is very welcoming. After all, you know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And he really doesn't want us to get into uh, contact with them, huh? Well, did you steal it? How could I steal it when it was ours to begin with? And besides, the Golden Spike is all our property, Topekans and Atchison's alike. We don't keep it in our town hall because we want to keep it out of Atchison hands. We keep it here because the hall is secure, unlike their impoverished little camp. Wow, he really looks down upon them, huh? How secure is it? The display case is locked, and my choppers are on guard at all times. And we'll attack anyone who attempts to take it. Tell me about the choppers. They are my personal guard. Men so loyal that they severed their left arms when I lost mine in the great train wreck. That's a nice sign of loyalty, but also a sign of stupidity, right? Because it makes them all much weaker. Tell me about oh, tell me more about the wreck. The Atchison's greatest sabotage. They smashed the ties and our train derailed. I was driving that train and lost my arm in the wreck. Now I can never drive again. I will never forgive the Atchisons for that. Well, let's play dumb. And why can't you drive the train? It's impossible. Even the strongest man needs two arms to drive a train. The... the cut of the arms? Yes. To honor me and the arm I lost in the wreck. Do not think it makes them less dangerous. They can still kick your asses. Yeah, yeah. And tell me about the Golden Spike. The sacred Golden Spike was given to our forefathers before the apocalypse by the hammer god, John Henry, and is a symbol of our right to rule all the rail tribes. It is our most sacred relic. The Adjacents believe it is theirs alone, but they are liars and shall never have it. Mm, who was John Henry? The first of our tribe, and the greatest. A fighter of robots and a driver of steel, who laid all the rails you have ever seen, and died with his hammer in his hand. Lord, Lord. Wow. And who is Casey James? The leader of the Atchisons. 
Once we were friends. We worked side by side. He to maintain the rails, I to maintain the trains. Now he is my enemy and uses the weapons of a coward. A quick death is too good for him. Mm, and who are the Topicons? We are a peaceful people. Honest traders who once crossed the wastes like gods upon our iron horse. And we will again, as soon as we have taken back from the Atchisons what is rightfully ours. And what do you think of the Atchisons? Of they do not fight with honor. They sabotage and plant bombs like cowards and weaklings. It is only because I continue to hope for peace that I have not killed them all. Instead, I make examples of their worst offenders in hopes the rest will learn. Yeah. And what threats are these? Our greatest threat at the moment is these rail thieves who have set up a hideout somewhere near the Atchison camp and who are ambushing anyone who dares travel the road between us. How are we supposed to conduct a war with our bitterest enemies when these bandits attack our war parties? It is a great inconvenience. Um, would you like us to get rid of our uh, rid are you of this inconvenience? Now that is the true spirit of the desert rangers. Protecting the wastes from lawless scum. Yeah. Not telling law-abiding citizens how to solve their problems. Thank you, rangers. I would welcome your help in this matter. Actually, no, right? The desert rangers are also mediators at times. Who are the real thieves? They don't rob trains. They steal rails and sell them for scrap. Now they hover above us like buzzards, waiting for us and the Atchisons to kill each other so they can swoop in and scrap our train cars and our locomotives. Filthy scavengers. We met the Topicon on the path here. He'd been badly hurt by a bomb, but we got him stabilized and on his feet. It was the Atchisons, wasn't it? Their bombs have been killing and maiming us by the dozens we once considered them brothers is unthinkable. They claim we've stolen their precious golden spike, and it was never theirs to begin with. Our conflicts with them will not end until each and every Atchison hangs. It's been a very long time that I've played this game, right? And I don't remember much from it. Um, but something my intuition says that that guy did plant the bomb himself, you know? I will have one of my choppers assist the poor man. All right. Goodbye. Keep out of our business, Rangers. Chief Kekovov, good to see you. General Vargas sends his regards. All right. No respect back, huh? Let's press the F9 here. Stop any closer. Ah, oh, that is right over there. Hmm. Let's go back then. For now. Oh. Another visit, Rangers. No. Oh, 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 oh. Let's wait here. There's a side entrance, huh? Oh boy. This might be very interesting, right? You know, let's see what we can do, actually. Hmm, a side entry. Uh, not here, though. Not here. My mom always wanted uh, me to walk on a train, but trains uh, are boring. Hey, it's not though. Trains are hella cool though. Now, unless you have a dump of a train, then of course it's not. That's very comfortable uh, long distance traveling, right? You know? This is Chief Kekaba. My choppers just found another Atchison bomb buried near the water tank. It has been defused, but there may be others. Be on your guard, Topekans. The Atchisons hate us for our quality of life and will stop at nothing to bring us down to their level. You know what doesn't make sense? That the Atchisons have so much infiltration power that they can just walk around freely, you know what I mean? This is where they used to switch different trains from track to track back when they had more than one train. But you know what I mean, right? You know, how come they can infiltrate this place non-stop? It doesn't make much sense. 
You are almost overcome by the smell of fermented cactus fruit. Above the door is an old sign that reads The Little Red Man, home of Dr. B. Bilius Bolfor, world famous snake squeezing. Hastily scrub beneath the old sign reads No deserts come allowed. Let's go inside then, huh? We are not allowed to go in here. Mm hmm. There we go. This is clearly. Ranger in his thirsty work, isn't it? Okay, you don't sound uh, native to me though. A uh, local bar place where homemade alcohol can be purchased. A grizzling old man sits behind the counter. He smiles at you with the with two teeth in his in his head. All right, interesting. What do we have here? Topicon, 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 Samuel, Topicon, Topicon, and Topicon. Let's talk to Samuel first. Rangers? I don't know nothing about it. Oh, ever heard of Hellraiser? He's a ranger, right? Don't know too much about him, but I did hear he was over in the Atchison camp doing some kind of investigation. Yeah, look at him though, right? Very cool avatar. What it don't you know about? Any it. I don't know anything, honest. You can ask anyone. I just peddle booze. What kind of booze? I'm a traveling snake squeezing salesman. I buy wholesale from Gorkinovich here and sell all around the wastelands. High pool, ag center, even Ranger Citadel. You know more about it than you uh, let on, Samuel. Big boy. Did you know the Ranger named Ace? Who? No. Never heard of him. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, hot ass. Good that we do have this, right? Have you heard what we do to liars? All right. Please don't hurt me, Rangers. Yes, I traveled with Ace. It's always nice to have a Ranger for company on the road. Keeps the bad guys away, but but not this time. Something was hunting him, and it attacked him our second night out of Rail Nomad. Killed him, the poor guy. Oh. I almost forgot. I grabbed his logbook before I went looking for help. Okay, and why are you just saying that now, huh? Hmm, what kind of something? I don't know what it was. It was horrible. It looked like a man, but it was made of plastic. And its eyes... Uh, I still see them when I sleep. And how was he killed? It was a terrible fight. That thing tore into Ace like a ripsaw. I fired a few shots at it, but it didn't pay any attention. It just kept hacking at Ace with these knives that came out of its body. Then when Ace wasn't moving anymore, it stole his pack and his case and started to crawl off with him. Mm. Well, it couldn't walk, could it? Ace shot one of its legs off. Didn't get far, neither. After a while, all the oil bled out of it, and it just lay there. Then the lights went out of its eyes, and it was gone. I found it in that thing's shoulder pack, and I took it. But I was going to give it back the next time I came around to Ranger Citadel. Honest. Here, of, take it. I don't want it. Of course, of course. Honest, right? You know, we had to threaten you. Hang on, Echo One. I can't let this coward go. He just watched his ace die. Ooh. Hey! No! Leave me alone! This is for you, Ace. Oh, shit. Whoa! Gosh, my second best squeeze and customer. Thanks a lot, Rangers. You're welcome, big boy. Well, I mean, Angela Dev, are you happy with this, though, with your decision? I've never been in a bar before. No, no, you have, though, huh? Do they all smell like this? And sometimes they smell a little bit like piss, you know? Uh, on a TV screen, a guy with a mullet is fighting another guy with a mullet. Yep, 70s. A uh, pouncy red face and ferociously bearded. The bartender looks an old overgrown dwarf from some pulp fantasy novel. Except for the little black cap with the red star that he wears. P uh, purts on top of his mop of grey hair. Welcome Rangers to the finest bar in Topekan territory. I'm always happy to squeeze libations for the storied and heroic paladins of the desert. We are proud to pour the finest squeezins known to man. And for rangers, at the finest price known to man. Oh, really, huh? Oh, Gorkinovich. I'm very honored if that is the case, though. But never trust some strange that call tells you that you are a friend. How do you feel about the desert rangers? Always welcome in my establishment, provided they don't get no thirst for killing. Well, a little bit late for that, huh? 
Uh, we would like to buy some squeezins. To be honest, you already seem tough as nails, but if that's what you want, you came to the right place. Buy all you'll need. It's all based on sale. How many bottles would you like? <laughs> interesting though huh sneak squeezings that's a lot of money though huh when you absolutely don't want to remember the rest of the day nothing gets the job done like snake squeezings except no substitutes all right now and how do you feel about being a topicon folks say rail nomad is divided between the topicons and the adjacents but it ain't so the topicons run the trains and started the town the Atchison's just work here. Hmm. Well, we like... No. Uh, what do you think of the Atchison, uh, Atchison's? Used to be good customers till Kekobar kicked them out of the camp. Now, Casey James and the rest of them are so mad that does it's best to shoot them before they get too close. Liable to blow themselves up elsewise. They, they got a camp on the outside of ours. Pathetic. Surprised it don't dry up and blow away, and them with it. Hmm, but the trains don't seem to be running. Don't I know it? I could triple my squeeze in sales if I could establish regular trade with my far off customers. No, that Sammy's gone. All I got left are the hobos. It's all that goddamn Casey James's fault. What do you think of Kickerbar? He was our leader and one top hombre. Helps keep those local jerks in line. I just wish he'd ease up a little on these Atchison's. Not that they ain't evil, murdering bastards. But this war is hell on trade. If I speak my, my ancient dialect, right, you know, Saxon, it's really, really ancient though, right, you know? Um... I don't mean the British Saxon version, I mean the mainland Europe version, right? Kaka, bah, means actually shit, disgusting. It's not a joke, right? You know, like kaka, you know? <laughs> it's really weird, man. <laughs> I keep smiling when I see this. But uh, maybe that's a different meaning here, right? You know, that's the beautiful thing about um, uh, languages. Like uh, a friend of mine said that bomba uh, doesn't mean bomb. Yeah, like like in in Germany it does or in the Netherlands, uh, but it means in Vietnamese, you know, like a fart, bomba, you know. Well, it's actually the same thing, bomb, you know, right out of the booty. All right, what do you think of Casey James? He was a good man once for an Atchison, but even then he was stubborn. Now that Kekabars kicked him out, he's gone from stubborn. Murderous. What's standing in the way of trade? We are. Until us, the Pekin stop fighting them. Atchison's will never get the train running. And that'll never happen because Kekabar and old Casey James are too stubborn to compromise. They both blame each other for the wreck and they both claim the golden spike. Is theirs by right. It will be mine by right. So what kind of jerks? All the hobos and junkies and royalties that live around here always busting things up and not worth the spit it takes to curse them. Uh, what wreck is this? Happened a few years back. Kekaba was driving the train and it crashed. Cost him his arm. He blamed the Atchison's for not maintaining the rails. They blamed us for not maintaining the brakes. That's why they stole the brake shoe too. Mm, what's so special about the Golden Spike? The Golden Spike is the honor of our tribe. Given to us by John Henry himself, no matter what the Atchison say. If we was to lose that, we wouldn't be to Pekins no more. Mm. So you don't like the hobos, huh? They're my best customers. Until they're my worst. <laughs> you have a problem with the junkies? No use for those losers. They don't drink squeezins. They just snort circuit. <sighs> Disgusting. Sounds like, uh, like an Egyptian god, right? You know, circuit. Uh, who are these rail thieves? 
train rubbish. Ah, oh, gosh, now that the trains ain't running, they're just robbers. Got to hide out somewhere between us and the Atchison camp. It's them where he should be fighting, not the Atchisons, if you want my opinion. Mm-hmm. The kicker ball lost his arm. You didn't know? Yep. He's only got the left one now. Or was it the right? Uh, either way, he's tougher with one than you are with two. Of course. Tell me about the brake shoe. It's the thing that makes the train stop. The Atchison's took it from us. They said they wouldn't let us run the trains unless we took better care of them. Mm-hmm. What circuit? They make it out of ground-up scorpions. Poison, if you ask me. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> Come back again. I will, I will probably. But by that, though, I want to thank you for tuning so in. I don't really... care for drink or drinkers. Same, same, same. But by that, I want to thank you all for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful time. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Stay happy, stay healthy. And don't forget to subscribe, though. Bye-bye.